All right, so we're going to do a quick comparison of the systems that we that we just looked at, okay? The plurality and the ranking systems of voting. And I want you to be able to do this and be able to do it uh, fairly cleanly um, on a quiz, on a test, and things of that nature. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take an example. And we have four candidates, A, B, C, and D. And we have seven voters, okay? So in each one of these, I'm going to ask you to push pause, do the thing, and then uh, come back and see the answer. So right now with plurality voting, meaning majority rule, if we were only to give all of these voters just one vote, right, and that vote went to a candidate, we're going to assume that that means everybody's three went to the candidate that they wanted. Who would have won in this situation? Well, it's clear that candidate A wins, right? They get three first place votes. Everything else, everybody else gets less than three. So candidate A is the winner of plurality or majority rule. Um, however you want to say that. All right, if we do the approval method, and by the way, these are the same numbers, okay, and they're going to be the same numbers throughout most of the slide. So with the approval method, A means the voter approved of them. Who wins in this case? Yeah, it's pretty clear that, um, all right, A got three approvals. B gets three, C gets three, D gets four, and you're done. All right, so voter D wins the approval method. All right, I want you to push pause and try to calculate the counting points method. All right, hopefully you counted all of those. Push pause. What I got is A gets 10 points, B gets 13, C got 12, and D got 7. If I miscount, I, I, I'm sorry about that, but uh, um, I did that real quick. 10, 13, 12, 7. So I could be wrong, but uh, you'll let me know in the comment section if I am. Anyways, if I counted right, then B whoops, is the... Uh, Clear winner there. All right, I want you to take, uh, again, push pause. And with sequential pairwise voting and having the agenda A, B, C, D, what would be the way to go here? Who would win? All right, hopefully you did that. Um, have this agenda. I'm going to write it down here. A, B, C, D. In fact, I don't need to write things in between them. But A versus B. Um, you should see that B wins. Okay. Let me just write real quick here. Uh, B wins there. A, 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 B, B, B. B wins four. All right. B versus C, B and C, all right, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll do the blue, all right, so obviously C wins there, C and D, C, D. C wins again. So with that sequence, C wins. 
So I want you to go through, and instead of starting C at the, having them almost at the end, let's say C starts in the front. Now let's see who wins in this case. All right, push pause, do the sequential pairwise voting on this guy, and see who wins. All right, so hopefully you did that. So C, A, B, D. Okay. C versus A. All right. C, A, 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 C, C. A wins. A, B, D. All right. A versus B. B wins. B versus D. D. I got B. All right. So in that case, B wins. All right. So sequential pairwise voting with this agenda, B should win. I think. Again, if I did this right. How about with the hair system? And we're going to break any ties that we have with plurality voting. Um, or, or if we can't get plurality to work, we'll jump to the next thing of, of counting points. So push pause. Try to do the hair voting system on this idea. All right, least preferred candidate D to start out with, okay? Candidate D only summed a total of seven points, so that's least preferred. And now we got to rank it, re-rank everybody with zero, one, twos. So zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. Zero, one, two, zero, one, two. All right. So start counting these up. A has seven. B has seven. D has seven. All right. So it's a tie right now in first place. All right, I, I said D, I meant C. So A, B, and C all have seven points each. And so what we need to do is we need to break the tie somehow. Um, so this says break any ties with plurality voting. Okay, so plurality, I mean majority rules. Who's got the most first place votes? And by first place votes, I mean votes which are two in red. So for instance... This would count as a first place vote for C because we've eliminated D already, okay? So if you look at that, all right, it turns out we have a three-way tie. So C and A have three first place votes. B has only one. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate B, all right? Because, again, we said we're going to break any ties with plurality. Since A and C are tied with three first place votes, we go and do the thing again. So we're going to re-rank. And 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. All right, I see here that A has 4 and C has 3. Therefore, we're going to eliminate C. And our champion with the hair system is A. Okay? So hopefully you saw how that worked, and that's uh, not too intimidating. But champion with the, with the hair system is going to be A. All right.
Now, the big idea and the big thing you should have noticed is that each of these systems or each of the systems was judged on the same set. So we had the same seven voters, the same numbers every time. And there was a system where we got A to win. There was a system where we got B to win. There was a system where we got D to win. And there was a system where we got C to win. So all of the candidates, all of the various candidates in this example, won using different voting methods. Okay? So there's an obvious question of which one should you use. Okay? And... You would want, if you cho chose a perfect system, or if you could divide, uh, devise a perfect system, you'd always want the candidate with the most pl first fl place votes to win. You'd also want a candidate, if they were c the Condorcet winner, that means beat everybody else head to head, then they would win. You'd also want a system where if A always stays ahead of B, and A is the winner, you know, B can move around behind them, then A still wins. And you'd also want a system that if somebody who is dis doesn't win drops out of the election, then the winner would be the same. All right? That would be a perfect system. But it turns out that there is no such thing. If you have more than two candidates, there is no perfect system. Okay, there's flaws in all of them um, in certain, certain ways. Okay, each of the systems has issues. And it turns out you can't satisfy, uh, you can't devise a system which satisfies all four of the things that we'd want in a perfect system. All right, now that's maybe a little bit disappointing, but that's how mathematics works. And mathematics can prove to you that there's no perfect system which may sound a little bit defeating at first, but it turns out it's, it's kind of uh, comforting to know that, that yes, it's, it's not be just because we haven't thought well enough about the system. It's that it can't be done. So I go back to the question of, you know, which one should you use? If you're going to try to devise a voting method, um, which one would be best? Well, it really doesn't matter which system that you use. There are systems that obviously, if you are one of the candidates, have maybe advantages for you. Like if you're a candidate, you may want to do sequential pairwise voting with you at the end. All right? Um, if you're a candidate, you may want to do some other type of voting. Okay? But regardless of what you choose, what you should do is you should choose it before the voting takes place. Because if you try to take the vote and then devise the system, it's going to make people a little angry, right? If, they, if their candidate could have won in another system. So decide well beforehand what system you're going to use, and stick to it. And make sure that every one of the voters and every one of the candidates knows what system you're using. Okay? Also, don't try to devise your own method. Go with something that, you know, has already been devised. Go with a known method, uh, a recognizable method. Okay? You should always have a just-in-case scenario of how you're going to break ties. And maybe you want to have multiple layers of these. So that, you know, one, if it does ever come up where a candidate's tied, or if we had eight voters and head-to-head -head we have a four-and-four four tie, then what are you going to do? All right? So find ways to break ties. And then also... This goes along with deciding well beforehand. Make sure you write it down and, like I said before, communicate it to the candidates, communicate it to the voters, that we all um, understand how things are going to happen before any sort of vote takes place. Okay? 
And as long as you do those things, whatever voting method you decide, whether it's deciding um, of how to vote in a local sports club or how to vote if you are you know, on a board of some kind or how to vote in a political election, um, you'll be sitting in a, in a be much better place than if you don't. All right? So if you're going to devise a voting method, stick to those four main points.